Hey, thanks for watching this review. Before we get started, if you're trying to choose the best surf skate for you, then I invite you to get my ultimate surf skate selector at surfskate.love. The surf skate selector includes over 100 models from the top 10 surf skate trucks, including Aquilo, Carver C7 and CX, Curveboard, Slide, Smooth Star, Spy Skate, Swell Tech, Waterborne, and Yao. All you have to do is answer eight quick questions and the Surf Skate Selector automatically eliminates every model that doesn't meet your specifications and gives you a very small list of only the very best Surf Skate models for you. So click the link in the video description below to get the Ultimate Surf Skate Selector now. If you've seen my original review of the Curveboard, you know that I reviewed the Curveboard Classic model. And in that review, I basically concluded that I personally didn't call the Curveboard a quote unquote real surf skate only because this particular model doesn't have very much lean on the truck. I basically called it a pumpable longboard cruiser. Well, after watching that review, Curveboard reached out to me and said, hey, we have another model, the Performance Wave model. They told me that their truck actually does have lean and that this model in particular does so they sent me the performance wave model to review and after testing this extensively I've concluded the same that they're right that there is a way to get enough lean out of the curveboard truck that it is a bit of a game changer for me and that's what I want to talk about in this review because as you well know my abilities as a writer are very limited and so to do this review I hired my buddy Joey Daly who's the best surf skater I've ever seen who lives down in Oceanside California to come up to St. George Utah with me to stay for a full week and to test all of these trucks including the curveboard and so at the end of this review you're going to get Joey's take on the curveboard in relation to all these other trucks and the other benefit that having Joey on this review is that the riding throughout in this review you're going to see not me but Joey so you're going to see a rider who has a much wider range of capabilities than me who can put these boards to their full capabilities So let's talk about what gives the curveboard lean and the differences between these models. And really it just comes down to one difference. When you look at the curveboard classic, you'll see that there is no riser pad on the front. And you'll also see that this back truck has a fairly low profile. One of the things that Curveboard said to me is they were wondering if the lack of lean could be that I didn't have this truck loosened up enough but every truck I ride, I ride as loosely as possible. And so the very first thing I did when I bought this curve board was I loosened up this nut as much as I could. So that was not the issue. It really is when you don't have a riser pad on this front truck, that's what's going to prevent lean on the curve board. So when you look at the performance wave model, you'll see that we have, uh, I believe that's a half inch riser pad on the front. And on the rear, the, the classic model also has this angled wedge riser on the rear, but they don't have the front riser. So here's the bottom line. If you want to get lean out of the curveboard truck, it's a combination of an angled wedge riser in the back and a riser on the front truck. Here is the lean on the curveboard classic. And here's the lean on the performance wave model with an additional riser. So you can see how that most definitely is changing the lean of that. Let me also real quickly give you a frame of reference on the lean compared to some of these other trucks. So here is the Curveboard Performance Wave. Here is the Yao Meraki. Here's a Carver C7 rail to rail lean. And here's a Carver CX. So I think you can see on that how the curve board is a little bit less than all of those. Behind me here, I have what I believe to be are the top 10 surf skate trucks in the world. I envision these on a scale of pure surf trainers on the one hand to pure street cruisers on the other hand. Now, obviously, as a non-surfer, I can't tell you which one of these best replicate surfing. I can't make any commentary on these as relate to surfing. But what I can do is reduce them to measurable properties that I can explain to you. The further left you are on this scale, the more it's a pure surf trainer. They have smoother, more fluid, looser trucks, they're more responsive to upper body movements, 
When you pump them, they tend to generate more lateral side-to-side -side motion as opposed to pulling you forward with forward momentum. They're best used for small areas on smooth surfaces, like cone drills in, on tennis courts, things like that, which makes them actually less versatile than the street cruisers. So the more you move on this side of the scale, the properties are the trucks are tighter and snappier. They are a little bit less responsive to upper body movements. And in fact, they kind of require a little bit more input out of your lower body, like, like your ankles, uh, using your rails with your ankles, things like that. They generate more forward momentum when you pump them, which means that they're better for traveling for longer distances. And that makes them more versatile as well. Okay, so with that scale in mind, where I put the curve board is, in the category of pure surf trainers. As you can see, this truck is uh, quite obviously the uh, loosest truck on the market. You're not gonna get any looser than that. And so what this means is it's very responsive to upper body movements. I would say it feels like a combination of between the Smooth Star Thruster and the Swell Tech. And the reason why I say that is because of all of these trucks, I think that this and the Smooth Star Thruster probably have the least amount of rail to rail lean. Both the Curve Ford and the Smooth Star Thruster have the same effect to where it's very easy for me to stand on this and kind of just wiggle my front foot back and forth like this. But they also, because they're so smooth and fluid, they also incentivize true surf skate compression and, and uh, extension form, right? This one's so like mellow. You know? the curve board the stable swell tech and that's weird to say because the curve board as you can see is very very stable that's one of the advantages of it. it's very stable for beginners whereas the swell tech is very loose and actually uh, let me just show you a demonstration of this here's our lean on the curve board and on the swell tech the swell tech is an interesting truck because we actually have enough range of motion on this to where I can lean all the way down to where you know, I'm, that's too far and you're gonna be breaking that truck. So what this means is on the Swell Tech, you actually have more of a limited range of motion about like so that you, and you can't use the rest of this because it right there, it's gonna break on you. When you compare the rail to rail lean of the curve board to the Swell Tech, they're very similar, but the big difference is that when you break on that lean on the Swell Tech, that truck is breaking and you're gonna, uh, jackknife that truck whereas the curve board when you hit that breaking point you are not going to jackknife there is a little bit of a hitch to it right there you can see you hit a certain point on the lean if you're in a tight uh, lean where there's it's what I call a hitch you'll hit this point and it'll go like this you can see that motion right there and I'm going to show this to you slow motion underneath but here's the difference you're not jackknifing and eating pavement so that's why I call it the stable swell tech, is because it gives you the same range of motion, but it's going to actually protect you and keep you safe in that range of motion. Now, whether or not that's a pro or con for you, I don't know. I imagine that as a surfer, I could see an advantage to it because it's, it's keeping you in that range of motion before you kind of hit that, that hitch. Uh, because on a surfboard, I, uh, as I understand it, if you lean too much, especially on the front, you're going to be wiping out. And so I think that's the advantage of the Swell Tech is it's keeping you in that range of motion and training you to stay in that motion. And, and the curve board is doing the same thing for you, but in a much stabler and safer way. So I'll leave that up for you surfers to debate. All I can tell you is that for me personally, that little hitch in the curve board truck when you hit the deep lean, I personally don't like that because I like really leaning deep into my rails on tight carves with no reference to surfing at all. 
And so when I hit that deep lean on a curve board and hit that little hitch, it's a little bit, uh, you know, unstable, disconcerting for me. It's not a feeling that I like because I, in my skating, am very often leaning much deeper than that curve board truck allows. Again, as a surfer, you might look at that and say, that is proper and true to surfing because you know your, your your rails may not be leaning as much as I'm leaning when I'm personally skating. The first thing on the pro side that I would say about the curve board is that it is the loosest and most fluid surf skate truck, which makes it very responsive to upper body movements. The second thing I would say is that it is very stable, which makes it great for beginners. I would also say that the way it's built incentivizes proper surf skate pumping form that flows from your core. Another advantage is that the curveboard truck is very light and that makes for a very great board balance, which I like a lot. Another interesting thing to note about the curve board is that even though you see how loose it is, this actually gets no speed wobbles. As long as you have your wheels making contact with the ground, the faster you go, the actually the more stable it is. The final advantage I wanna talk about on the curve board, and this is a big one, is that the way the curve board truck is designed, you can actually step your front foot forward, more forward on the curve board truck than on any other truck, including the Carver C7 or Carver CX. And what that means is that you can have a shorter deck to accommodate a wider stance width. So for me, for example, I'm an 18 inch stance width, which is a fairly wide stance. I'm, I'm six feet, two inches tall. This Performance Wave is a 29 inch model. Now, typically on any other surf skate, 29 inches in length would not work for me but this actually works for me because I can utilize the entire length of the board. If this were say a Smooth Star Thruster or a Swell Tech, I would have to have my foot clear back behind these bolts, which means I wouldn't be able to utilize this whole front section of this deck. And so I like that a lot about the curve board because it makes your curve board setups nimble. Another big advantage to you being able to step on top of that curve board truck is that it makes the curve board very good for practicing cross-stepping. Now, I'm not a cross-stepper. Joey can do it, and you're gonna see some clips of him. But if you are a longboard surfer and you wanna practice your cross-stepping, the curve board's great. It, it's very stable to do that. Now, I don't know, maybe that's a disadvantage. Maybe you want something a little bit less stable that's more true to being in water. But great cross-stepping board because you can get right on the top of this. You can be hanging 10 on this with no issues on that truck whatsoever. Now let's talk about the cons of the curveboard truck, which uh, may or may not be cons for you. I I'll just try to describe them. But the first thing I would say is that because the truck doesn't snap back to center, you see how it just kind of has this uh, flop. So the advantage of that is that it gives you that uh, very smooth, loose, fluid feel the con for me is that it reduces your forward momentum when you pump, which actually means that I have to put uh, more effort into pumping if I want to go longer distances on the curve board. Now, when you change the wheelbase on the curve board, it changes that forward momentum. So for example, you're going to get a lot more forward momentum when you pump out of this uh, longer wheelbase of the classic model than you are on that shorter wheelbase of the uh, wave model. So you definitely can change that effect. But ultimately, the effect is that it just doesn't pull you forward, which as a street cruiser, it goes long distances. That's just not the best thing for me in my style of riding. Another con for me on the curve board is that it tends to rattle on cracks and bumps. And that's a non-issue. When you're riding this on smooth surfaces, you're not gonna hear that. But when you're a street cruiser like me and you're going long distances over rougher terrain, you are going to feel that and hear that. And then the final con for me on the curve board, and I'm gonna leave the caveat on this because there's lots of great bull riders who love the curve board, but for me, I did not find the curve board to be the best for bull riding and transitions because 
What I found is that uh, when you're on really smooth transitions, it works. But for the bowls that I'm riding, there's actually quite a few kind of awkward transitions. And on those awkward tra transitions, because of the way this truck is designed, what I find is that I get into scenarios where I get one or more wheels coming off of the ground because the board doesn't quite like conform to those awkward transitions. Having said that, Mark the Landlocked Surfer up in Ottawa, Canada, who's a fantastic bowl rider, has been riding the Performance Wave in bowls and loving it. So uh, on that front, wait to hear from Mark and he's going to be more of an expert on that front but so i would say you know if you're a beginning more of a beginner to intermediate rider like me and you're not the best rider then i'm probably going to say the curveboard is not going to be the best for bowls you're going to want something more stable like the i go with the carver cx in bowls for me but uh, if you're a better rider than me not only might this perform better, but you actually might love the curveboard in the bowl. Another thing to point out about the curveboard truck that curveboard pointed out to me is that it is lower to the ground than any of the other surf skate trucks, especially when you don't use the riser pad on the front. Now, personally, I don't find that to be an advantage because if you remove the riser pad to make it low to the ground, it means you don't get the lean out of it. So personally, I actually want more risers than Curveboard gave me on this performance wave to get more lean out of it, which means that for me, the way I ride it, make, means that it, it kind of makes that point obsolete for me. Another thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to read something that Curveboard uh, wrote to me. They said that the Curveboard has no bushings or springs that can wear out or break like in other systems where this happens quite often. No bushings and springs also means you're not losing any energy in these when pumping, which makes the curveboard pump more effortlessly and riding is not as exhausting even when riding very long distances. I have a little bit of a different take on it. My experience is that precisely because the curveboard is so effortless to pump, what that means is I have less forward momentum. So what you gain in the fluidity, you lose in the forward momentum. So even though they're technically right that to the pumping motion is smoother and more uh, effortless, the end result of it is for a long distance cruiser such as myself, I end up inputting more energy into the curve board than say a Carver CX or a Yao Meraki because you're losing the, the advantage that you get out of the bushing or a spring. And the function of a bushing or a spring is that it is snapping your truck back to center more. You get more rebound when you're pumping and that rebound means that you get more forward momentum Now let's really quickly talk about the fact that the curveboard truck is sold separately, which means you can buy just the truck and then configure your own curveboard setup. And I wanted to talk about how to go about that. First and foremost, you want to have a wedge riser on the back like you see here. So, uh, so get a wedge riser. That's going to create some lean on that front truck. But if you want even more lean than what you're seeing here, the secret is to just add more risers. So I did a lot of kind of customizing and messing around on this to find my, uh, my favorite setup. And my favorite setup on every, anything that I did was I put the front curveboard truck on my Carver Proteus with a Carver CX rear truck. And then I had to put a full one inch riser on the front of this to match the height of that CX truck. And that had a bunch of advantages for me. First of all, it gave me more lean than even what you see in this performance wave model, which I liked more. Secondly, what that did was it kind of softened up this. Everything about the curveboard is kind of like hard. That rattle, the, the wheels are a little bit harder. The truck rattles. So I would say anything you can do to kind of soften up the curveboard is going to be to your advantage. Now, one of the reasons why I bring that up is because when you're analyzing if the curveboard is for you, you know, I'm really seeing the curveboard for two people. The first is the pure surf trainer for, surf tra for surfers, as I've already discussed. And secondly, if you're not a surfer like me, if you're a non-surfer and you're just kind of a geek about surf skates like me and you're just adding to your quiver and you might want to be considering the curveboard, you know, that would be the other person I'm thinking of, of, of if you want to just buy that curveboard truck separately and put together your own setup. If you're looking to do uh, like cone drills on flat surfaces in small areas, 
I think the curve board works very well for that. Ultimately, for me as a street cruiser, the curve board isn't my favorite ride, and it really comes down to those uh, three things we've already talked about. The first thing is that lack of forward momentum pulling you when you're when you're pumping. The second thing is that rattle on rough ground, because I ride on a lot of rough ground when I travel long distances. And the third and final thing is that kind of little hitch in when you get a deep lean on a turn, you get that little hitch on that truck. That's just not my favorite sensation because I really like to really dig into those rails and get a deep lean on those tight carves. And with all of that said, let's now hear what Joey Daly's experience was on the curve board and what he has to say about it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the classic. I like the classic a lot. It is a great like beginner entrance board to uh, surf skating. It does have a good pivotal point. The only thing that I would change is maybe adding like a little pivotal point on the upper truck that gives you more of a lean. Because with the, the pump, it's kind of more of a side to side action, a swivel, instead of a full on pumping action. And you find, just as I did, that this one actually does have some lean this on it. This one definitely has more lean. It. it has a little bit more flow to it. I don't recommend lifting the nose at all, just because it doesn't have a snap to point. So it's kind of loose all the time, but it has a good flow. You don't get any like speed wobbles going uh, downhill, and overall, it's it's a uh, it's a good board. I don't, what don't you like about the curve board? I don't like that it doesn't have a stop point, and I would rather I would prefer that it like snap back to center instead of just flowing freely. Because uh, I do like if you were to go off a curb or if you were to go over a bump or something, if you hit anything, it's gonna just jar it. So. So that means it's just not as versatile. You're not gonna use this. Would you use this for like street skating, the kind of stuff that you do? Not personally, no. I'd use that for more of a downhill kind of like just pump and flow kind of board. Yeah. Uh, a lot of carves. It does get deep, but it lacks that uh, snap that you're kind of hoping for. So who would you recommend this board for? I would recommend this board for intermediate to like beginner surfers. Uh, and if you've never really stepped on a surf skate before, this would be a great introduction into getting the flow down, the process of pumping. What about riding this for transi in uh, transitions? We took this to the park the other day. What was your take on that? Personally, I found it very ineffective for my style in the park, in the bowl, in the transitions. I found when I came over certain transitions, the front would stay uh, secure and it would lash to the ground. But as I went over the transition, one of the back wheels would lift either side. Um, I don't know if that's uh, a point where they need to be able to pivot more here in the front or in the back, but that is, uh, I definitely feel the wheel coming off. So you feel like you're riding a three wheeler. Overall, I do give it like a, say out of 10, probably both curve boards at a beginner level, I'd give it a seven out of 10 for starting out surf skating. And you'll see in a lot of the footage, Joey, one of the reasons you liked this one is because you do a lot of like cross-stepping with it. Yeah. And when you compare this one to say like the uh, Yao Meraki, you can do cross-stepping in all of these, but you, this was like the easiest to do cross-stepping yeah, because so of it, its stability, it right? It is the most stable and it gives you the most uh, foot platform.